A few months ago, I made a video about the Mars Company and how it's much bigger than everybody realizes. Most people know them as the people who make Mars bars and M&Ms, but it turns out they make a lot of other popular candies as well as gum, snack foods, and even have multiple lines of pet products. Be sure to check out that video if you haven't already. So after the video, I moved on to other topics and never thought much more about it, but every so often when researching these other companies, I would come across another company like Mars that I'm sure is much bigger than anyone realizes. After seeing enough of them, I decided to make this a regular series. I promise every episode won't focus on a chocolate company, that series would be short-lived, but it is crazy that in searching for a topic of the second episode, there was no need to look outside the candy industry. So it turns out two of the most well-known names in candy are in fact even bigger than you know. Nestle as a company began in Switzerland over 150 years ago and remains in Switzerland today. And if the Swiss are known for one thing, it's their cheese. But I'd say chocolate is a close second. The name Nestle is a person's last name, Henry Nestle, spelled with an I. He started the company by chemically inventing what appears to have been a groundbreaking baby formula. The company was already around for over 30 years before chocolate even entered the picture, and by that time Henry Nestle had already sold the company. Now let's fast forward another 120 or so years and look at Forbes' list of the world's largest public companies. And tied for number 34 on the list is Bank of Communications from China. But also tied for number 34 is Nestle, showing $90.8 billion in revenue, $8.7 billion in profit, $129.8 billion in assets. Which are all astounding numbers, but the real reason Nestle made it to this list is the whopping $229.5 billion market value. That's right, I said whopping. Because it's considerably higher than most companies surrounding it on the list. But let's be perfectly clear about what this number represents. I went to Yahoo Finance and found Nestle. The number we're talking about is shown as market cap. And as of the close of the market on September 29th, it's even higher than was shown on the Forbes list, now sitting at $251.29 billion. The stock is trading for around $81 per share, and when I go to the statistics tab, I learn that there are about 3.1 billion shares on the market. The market cap is the total value of all the shares. So 3.1 billion shares at $81 per share gives us the market cap of $251 billion. It reflects how much the company is worth because it's theoretically the amount of money it would take to buy it on the market. But just think about that. Over 3 billion shares, each one of them valued over $80. So, I don't believe any of us will be purchasing Nestle anytime soon. But you may be thinking about purchasing a few shares, which would still run you a few hundred dollars, but it may be a smart investment, and here's why. Giving just a quick look at it on Yahoo Finance, aside from the general increase over the past five years, there's something that stands out to me. The number Yahoo gives for beta is 0.47. For someone who's not heavily involved in finance, this figure may be a little obscure. It's basically a measure of how risky the stock is. If the beta is 1, it means that specific stock is just as risky as the rest of the stock on the market. Less than 1 means it's not as risky, and more than 1 means it's more risky. So when I see 0.47, that's actually pretty low. If you were to go to Yahoo Finance and search for the beta of other well-known companies, I'm guessing most of them would be considerably higher. And just quickly, if you're wondering where the number comes from and how it's calculated, it's actually really simple. It's just the covariance of the return of an asset with the return of the benchmark divided by the variance of the return of the benchmark over a certain period, as shown in the formula. Alright, that's not quite as easy as I led you to believe. Luckily there's another way to do it. 
You could also just divide the security standard deviation of returns by the benchmark standard deviation of returns, then multiply that number by the correlation of the security's returns and the benchmark returns, as shown by this formula. Okay, it's not easy. None of it is easy. But what is easy is using the number Yahoo provides, and according to them, Nestle is one of the safer stocks you can buy. Alright, enough financial talk. You clicked on a video about chocolate and here I am talking about stock volatility. So right now, I'm going to ask you to do something. As I said, Nestle is a big company and they make a bunch of products. They own a variety of candy brands as well as other things. In just a second, I want you to go to the comment section and write all the products that you know that Nestle makes. Just write it like this. I already knew, and then a colon, and then make your list. It could be one brand, or it could be ten. There's four things on my list, and I'll reveal that in a minute. And just a note, if you work for Nestle, or if you just saw a documentary on Nestle, or have any information that the average person wouldn't know, go ahead and mention that in the comment as well. And also, if you got bored during that whole beta section and started looking at the comments, you're no longer eligible for this. Okay, all the rules have been set. Hit the pause button and go do it. I'll give you a few seconds. Did you do it? Okay, great. And if you didn't, that okay great wasn't meant for you. The reason I wanted everybody to do this is so I can try to get an accurate sample of what everyone knew going into this. I think it'll be interesting for everyone, including myself, to look through and compare their own knowledge to others. So here's my list. I knew about Crunch Bars, Toll House Cookies, Nesquik Chocolate Syrup, and I was iffy about Butterfingers. But it turns out I was right about all four of them, though I don't think I guessed all the products they make. According to their website, they are the world's largest food and beverage company, and have more than 2,000 brands in 191 countries. So, they probably make more than the four brands I named. And just a quick disclaimer, this is an international company. It's hard to just list what they make because it could be different producers in different countries. Also, I don't know what's most well known in other countries. But I'm going to try my best, based on my own personal knowledge. So, filling in some of the gaps in the chocolate industry, Nestle is also responsible for the 100 Grand Bar, Baby Ruth, Kit Kat and Rolo outside of the US, Snow Caps, and plenty more. In the non-chocolate candy realm, Nestle also owns the entire Wonka brand, and any candies included in that, meaning Gobstoppers, Laffy Taffy, Nerds, Sweet Tarts, and of course, Wonka Bars. And sort of similar to candy, they're also heavily involved in the ice cream industry. They own Dryers, Drumstick, Haagen-Dazs, Push-Up, and getting even further away from candy, they own Carnation and Coffee Mate in the dairy industry. Going along with Coffee Mate, they also have Nescafe Coffee Line and Nespresso. And to go make the coffee, you could use Nestle Pure Life Water or even Poland Spring. As of 2007, they even own the most well-known line of baby food, Gerber. So, when you're buying those delicious mashed up carrots and pears, you're buying them from Nestle. And when you go down the frozen food aisle, a lot of what you see is owned by Nestle. If you're buying Stouffer's frozen meals, maybe a nice lasagna or meatloaf, once again, Nestle. Or if you're staying away from the lasagna and want something a little healthier, you can go across the aisle to the lean cuisine section. But you still wouldn't be escaping Nestle. In the next aisle over with the frozen pizzas, it's still filled with Nestle products. Tombstone, Jax, DiGiorno, they're all Nestle. Here's one I bet you didn't know, Hot Pockets. The bread pocket filled with pepperoni pizza is made from Nestle, as well as the healthier version that they call Lean Pockets. When I made the video about Mars Incorporated, I was most surprised by their involvement in the pet food industry. And again, for Nestle, this is the most shocking section of their business. I don't know why chocolate companies seem to expand into pet food. I suppose anything edible is a logical step, but Nestle owns Purina brand. That means Alpo, One, 
Pro Plan, Dog Chow, Beneful, Fancy Feast, Friskies, Chef Michaels, all owned by Nestle. I actually never heard of Chef Michaels, but it has my name in it, minus the chef part, so I figured I'd include it. So just to review, Nestle is a major player in not only the candy industry, but also the industries of coffee, dairy, bottled water, frozen foods, including frozen meals, pizzas, and ice creams, as well as the industries of both pet food and baby food. And there's just so much I didn't mention. O. Henry Candy, Dibs Ice Cream, Boost Complete Nutritional Drink, California Pizza Kitchen. But I've spent enough time naming things made by Nestle. The way they brand all these products is a little strange in that it's not exactly promoting the Nestle name all over it, yet they're not trying to hide it either. For Mars, with the exception of the Mars bar, they seem to be trying to hide their name on their brands. You have to look at a Twix wrapper pretty closely before you realize that Mars is involved. But for most of the things made by Nestle, their name is pretty prominent. They put little lines over the word Nestle in their logo, and I think it either works as a camouflage, or maybe we're all just so used to seeing it that we don't even notice it anymore. Either way, it's like they're hiding in plain sight. Like how I wasn't sure if they made the Butterfinger bar, but it's hard to miss if you look at the wrapper. I knew about Nesquik, but I think the only reason I got that one is because it used to be called Nestle Quick. I didn't even catch on to the Ness in Ness Cafe or Ness Tea. Oh yeah, they also make Ness Tea by the way. For DiGiorno Pizza, their name doesn't appear on the front, but it's pretty big if you flip it over. Certainly doesn't seem like they're making any attempts to hide it. And then Hot Pockets. I'd be shocked to hear if anyone knew that one already. Yet, it's written right there on every box. But then on some products, like the Purina stuff, their name is understandably hard to find. Nobody wants pet food that's made by a chocolate company. Although, it seems between Mars and Nestle, almost all of it is in fact made by a chocolate company. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. Which brands were you most shocked to hear? For me, it was the Purina and the Hot Pockets, though DiGiorno was sort of a surprise to me as well. And keep in mind that there are many, many more that I failed to mention. Everything I did mention in this video are the ones that I perceive to be the biggest and most prominent. But this could be entirely different where you're located. So let me know anything I may have missed that's big in your area. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.